Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about second order differential equations. Now, so far in this playlist, we've been talking about first order differential equations, which is really where we just have a y prime, right? We haven't really dealt with a y double prime yet. I mean, we did at the very beginning, uh, but, but not yet. Uh, not yet in any depth, I guess, is what I'm saying. So first, I need to kind of define what do I mean by a second order ODE. Uh, second order ODE is of the form where we have the second derivative of y with respect to t both times, where y is just a function of t, is given by some function of t, y, and dy dt. Uh, that's what we would call a second order ordinary differential equation. Okay. Now, a linear second order differential equation would be where is where this f of t, y, and y prime is going to be given by, let me just make sure I'm going to use the right letters, because I'm going to then kind of shift the surrounding it into a more normal form. Um, I'm going to call it g of t minus p of t y prime, or dy dt, right? um, minus q of t y. Uh, when I saw this in the textbook, I was like, why are they define it to have a negative. But then they said, because what they really usually, the way we write this, is um, y double prime is equal to, no, 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 hold on. y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y is equal to g of t. That's typically how we're going to write it. Okay, so I've misplaced my eraser. Um, y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y is equal to g of t. Okay. And a homogeneous second order ODE is going to be where this g of t is constantly zero. Now, probably, you know, in the last few videos of this series, I'm going to be talking to you about when g of t is non-zero. And we'll have a technique to deal with that. Um, what we'll see is that, you know, if we can solve the one where g of t is equal to zero, then we'll be able to solve it for where it's non-zero, at least up to like defining it in terms of an integral or something. But we'll get there. So a homogeneous second order ODE is kind of like when we talked about a homogeneous system of e linear equations in linear algebra. It's going to be where it's set to zero. So homogeneous is where g is equal to zero. So you have like, you know, y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y is equal to zero. Okay. Um, that's what we're going to be interested in. And in this video, I'm going to stick just to where p of t and q of t are constants. Okay, because that's, that's actually kind of rich enough for us to talk about for a while. Um, so I think, yeah, let's look at that situation. All right, now to start with, I'm going to just show you this second order differential equation. It is linear, it is homogeneous, right, set to zero. And I'm going to just kind of show you the answer, um, right? I'm going to say that y of t equals e to the t is going to work, right? Because the, you know, y prime and y double prime in this case would be, maybe we'll call it y1 because there's going to be another one. You've already seen me do this, I think, in one of the earlier videos. Um, is equal to e to the t, y prime and y double prime are also equal to e to the t, so this would satisfy that, that different equation, right? But then there's also y equals e to the 2t. Okay. Um, I think I'd let you check on your own that y equals e to the 2t satisfies that. That would be 4 e to the 2t minus 6 plus 2 e to the 2t's. Okay, and it's going to go to 0. I was like, ah, how did I come up with that? And maybe you see how I came up with that. Um, that really, the, if we look at this as kind of like a polynomial, the roots of that polynomial are going to give us the numbers that go up here. Now, what was I going to say? Oh, 
Well, it turns out if we had just had some constant here, that would also work. So I want to kind of solve this situation in general where I have constant coefficients on y double prime, y prime, and y. And, uh, and then that should, you know, open up, open up some more problems for us. All right, so I'm going to go and move towards the, the general situation here where we have co co uh, constant coefficients of y, prime, y double prime, y prime, and y. Okay, um, I'm assuming that if this was not 1, that I would divide everything through by that number, and that could make that 1, and that would not change the other side because it's a 0, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the type of thing that seems to have second derivative, you know, kind of related enough to the original that we can satisfy this equation seems to be like e to the rt, right? Um, and maybe I'll just say, you know, yeah, y equals c e to the rt. Okay? And then, well, I'd say that y prime is equal to c r e to the rt. Uh -oh. And y double prime is going to be c times r squared e to the rt. Okay? And if I go through, oh wait, hold on. I need to use a different letter here, right? K should work. Okay. If I go and I plug these in here, I'll have y double prime is k r squared e to the r t. b y prime is going to be plus b k r e to the r t. And then cy is ck e to the rt. That's equal to 0. Okay. And, but I've got some things that I can factor out of this, right? I can get that k. I'm just going to divide through by k, right? Divide all the terms by k here. 0 divided by k, that's going to be 0. Right? And I can factor out an e to the rt. And I'll be left with an r squared plus b r plus c equaling 0. But I know that e to the rt is a positive number, right? For any, well, at least real value of t. Um, it's going to be a positive number. Uh, and it's never going to be 0, right? This, no matter what t is, in any world, that's not going to be 0. So I can divide both sides by e to the rt. And so that gives me r squared plus b r plus c equaling 0. We know how to solve this, right? We've got a formula for this. We learned it in Algebra 1. It's a quadratic formula. So, you know, we know that r is equal to negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c. All divided by 2a. Okay, well, just 2. And, well, this is going to solve this in general, right? Um, so my solution is going to be y equals c e to the rt. And there's two of them, right? Now, in this video, I'm going to be interested in where there are two of them. They are both real, and they are different, OK? We could look at, uh, I think we can look at a repeated root later, and we will definitely be looking at complex roots in the next video. Okay? Um, so I'm just going to you know, work a couple more of these, and uh, maybe just work one more, and then uh, Maybe give you a teaser of what we're heading towards in the next video. So, for one more, I'm going to I'm going to look at y double prime. Hmm. Maybe I'll switch it up. Uh, minus 9y prime is equal to 0. What we'll do now is we'll write down what we call the characteristic polynomial, which is kind of what I was working at earlier. It's, right, if I have y double prime, that's going to be r squared, 1r squared, minus just 9. Wait, no, no, no. I wanted that. To, well, actually, no, that, that'll work. Minus 9r. That was not originally the, uh, the what I had intended. I wanted y double prime minus 9y. But I can do this as I've written it. And that's equal to 0. And so this is r is equal to 0, or r is equal to 9. Okay, And then I know that the solution to this is like y, 1y at least, is c e to the 9t. And then 
y2 is going to be equal to uh, c e to the 0 t, which is just c. So what, what's going on here? Well, if y of t was a constant, c1 and c2, um, if y of t was a constant, then its derivative would be 0 and its second derivative would be 0. And so we kind of like vacuously satisfy that equation. But there we go. Um, so our general solution is like y of t equals c1 e to the 9t plus c2 e to the 0t. Okay. That's a pretty good example, right? And I think that the one that I want to wrap up with is what we'll be talking about next time. I want to talk about the y double prime what is it going to be plus y equals zero? All right. Now this is this is interesting. Um, this is one that if we looked at the characteristic polynomial, we were not going to be getting real numbers, right? Um, and so we're not going to really deal with that uh, today. But I will just tell you, you know solutions to this differential equation if you just think about it hard enough. You know, what's a function if we take the derivative twice? It's the negative of what we started with. Y equals sine x, right? Or sine t for this situation. Second one will be y2 is cosine t. And it's like, what does sine and cosine have to do with these over here that are always coming back e to the rt? And that's what I'll tell you about next time.